thanks for joining me. In this little video clip, we're going to be doing what I call a level two empirical formula calculation. This is something you might run across in an AP class, an IB class, or a college level class. And when I teach empirical formulas, I teach kind of a little ditty that you memorize. Percent to mass, mass to moles, divide by the smallest, multiply to whole. In this case, it's the getting to mass step that's as hard. Everything else is the same. Once we have mass of each of our components, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, then it's mass to moles divide by the smallest multiply to whole. It's much like an empirical formula. This is the tricky step. Now, what's going to be key here is that our grams of our compound, uh, the law of conservation of mass or matter, tells us that that mass of our compound has to equal the grams of carbon we get plus our grams of hydrogen plus our grams of oxygen. Now, carbon and hydrogen are pretty straightforward because all of the carbon that's in here ends up in CO2. So if we know how much CO2 we have, we can find out how much carbon. Uh, we can do mass to mass within is what we're going to do. All of the hydrogen ends up in water. So if we know our, um, our amount of water, we can get our mass of hydrogen. Again, mass to mass within. The real difficulty is the oxygen, because not only in this case is oxygen in the compound, but oxygen is added from the air to support combustion, and some of it is here and some of it is there. So it's the oxygen that's going to take just a little tricky step. And remembering this law of conservation of mass uh, formula or concept is going to be the key to that. So there's a variety of ways you can do this. If I have 0.501 grams of carbon dioxide, I can go from grams of CO2 to moles of CO2 to moles of carbon to moles or to grams of carbon. I like to merge all of that together by using the percent composition formula. So the whole molar mass of CO2 is 44.01 grams, and there's one carbon that contributes 12.01 grams to that. So this will be grams of carbon. My grams of CO2 will cancel. This is the fraction portion of percent composition, and it just streamlines your work a little bit. You could certainly do it the, the longer way that I mentioned. Okay, so this gives me... Um, Whoops, I wrote the wrong number down. Let me fix that for you. Sorry, glanced down at my paper wrong. That will give me 1367 grams of carbon. Now, I'm going to do the same thing for my hydrogen because all the hydrogen is in water and I'm given the amount of water. So I have this many grams of water and I'm going to use the percent composition there are two hydrogens times 1.01 over the whole mass of 18.01 grams of water. And that gives me 0 0.01155 grams of hydrogen. Hydrogen is pretty much a lightweight, right? Okay, so if I know mass, I can get mass to moles divided by the smallest multiplied to whole. I'm not quite there yet because I don't have my oxygen. We do know that if I had grams of oxygen, that the sum of all of those has to equal the mass of the acid burned because I can't create or destroy matter. So the sum of that has to equal 0.513 grams of our compound. So from this, I can find my grams of oxygen. I just do a subtraction, and if you do that subtraction, you should come up with 0 0.3648 grams of oxygen. So now I did the hard part, get to mass. Not quite as simple as percent to mass, but it's merged with things that uh, hopefully you've already learned in your class. Now the next step is mass to moles divide by the smallest multiply to whole. So let's start with carbon. We had 0 0.1367 grams. Use the molar mass of carbon. 
not the molar mass of the molecule. This is the molar mass of the molecule. I don't have this many grams of the molecule. I have this many grams of carbon. So don't be misled by that number. We're not going to use that yet. We will eventually, but not yet. And it's very common to put that number here as a mistake. And I don't want you to fall into that trap. So be careful. All right, notice I'm not using diatomic hydrogen because it's not pure hydrogen all by itself. It's hydrogen bonded to other compounds. And now our oxygen. Again, not diatomic because it's oxygen bonded to other atoms. Okay, so now we've got percent to mass, mass to moles. We've done that. Divide by the smallest because we want to get our mole ratio. It's a little unusual. Usually we have more hydrogens. Um, in this case, we don't. So hydrogen is our smallest in this case. We don't want to have a fraction here. Whoops, I don't know what I'm writing there. We don't want to have a fraction there. So that's why we divide by the smallest. And this is equal to Okay, I think I have a typo here. I think there's a zero there. Because this is a one, and this is a one, and this is a two. Okay, so our, sorry about that. Our empirical formula is CHO2. All right, now the last step is to find our molecular formula. So we want to know how many of these empirical formulas fit into our molecular formula. And so that's where we're going to use this formula, and that's when we'll finally use the molar mass of the whole molecule. And it's the only place. So our number of empirical formula units is equal to the whole molecule divided by each kind of link, so to speak, or each empirical formula, and that's 45.02 and so that's equal to 2. So we had 2 of these empirical formulas, so that gives us C2H2O4. Um, that doesn't tell us really much how they're um, bonded together. It doesn't, it's an acid, and that's not very clear from this formula. Oxalic acid is actually HC, H2C2O4, because C2O4 is the oxalate. 4 ox, 8, 2 cows. That's the oxalate ion. Okay, thanks for joining me. That was a challenging one. Rewind or go in and see your teacher if you need some more help. Take care.